and we are back. All right, so I need to bending down in the in in the respect in relating to inclining my ear. It's in other words, I'm, my ear is becoming acknowledged to God's voice. Ag my ear is is listening in acknowledgement. Listen to me in acknowledgement of the superiority of God's word. Uh, it's a long stretch of word, just for a, word, a small word, incline. When I incline my ear to the word of God, that means out of respect, out of regards for the will of God, out of, no, I know God's word is superior to anything that I am. So in other words, he says to me, it's when you when you put it down it says respect my word base your listening based base that onto the knowledge that my my word is superior to anything else now when we understand that and we couple that scripture that says bring every thought captive Bring every thought down captive to the obedience of Christ. Bring anything down that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, the, the, now, now it makes sense. How, how am I going to know? How am I going to, uh, how can I say, how can I bring down something that is higher than the knowledge of God, knowledge of God if I do not know that the God, God, God's word is superior to anything else. You see, an officer of the law will, will put you into prison. He will arrest you. Why? He's got high authority. You can go to him and say, no, I've done nothing, I've done nothing. He's, got, he's, he's acting on a superior authority. So in order for me to take things captive, I need to know that God's word is superior to everything else. I need to know God's word is my final authority. The world says this, God's word says this, and God's words take superiority over whatever the world says. Because the world system will fail, the world system will fall, the world system will break down, God's word will abide forever. So he says, Yeah, incline thine ear, bend your ear with, with that, with the, the, the how can I say, bend your ear with the, the attitude, if I may use that word. Bend your ear with attitude that God's word has final authority. So when I'm faced with something, and it's a wild thing, or it's a real thing, I've got to know the word of God. I've got to know, hang on, there's something higher, there's a higher knowledge, there's a higher wisdom, there is something more, 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 uh, something stronger than what I re just received by the world. This virus is not higher than God. This virus will never conquer God. So this, based on that fact, we can say we are more than conquerors over the virus. Why? Because we acknowledge God's strength above everything else. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven by which a man shall be saved. Because God's name, the, the name of Jesus has been placed above all things. And the Bible says and this is where the dominion, this is where the executive movement comes in. It's, 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 it says there, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Virus, coronavirus, when the name of Jesus is mentioned, has to bow the knee. Anything that the world brings, everything, anything that Satan can bring and, and show forth, will be obedient to the word. Because it's a spiritual law that God has put forth. And thank God He never asks us our opinion on it. Many people want to 
share their opinion on certain things. Nobody has asked you that. When God made the world, He never asked permission. When God made the world, He never asked you what you think of it. He made it to a standard where you can be compatible to what He has created. There's nothing that can exalt itself against the knowledge of God. There's nothing that can exalt itself against the fullness of God. God is our strength. God is our shelter. God is my strong house. There's nothing that can exalt itself. The Bible says this pertinently. It says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. They, they will be formed. They will be manufactured. But they will not prosper. In other words, they will not bear fruit. When you stand on your faith, not your faith, whatever you know your faith based on the will of god faith comes by hearing the word of god when you stand on your faith when you stand by faith then i can pronounce i am more than a conqueror i am victorious in christ jesus only then only then but it must be done in faith because this faith the bible says even your faith that overcomes the world even your faith that overcomes this world. I, I cannot take anybody, anything captive, not anybody, any anything captive if I don't know what the word of God says about it. I cannot be superior, I cannot be conqueror of something I have got no knowledge about. The Bible tells us, do not be ignorant of the devil's schemes. And it says, but we need to be knowledgeable in the will of God. Now, I've got more definition about incline your ear. Number one, we just talked about it. I need to stretch. I need to extend. And I need to show respect. I've, I need to know the superiority of God's word. And see, unless, you, unless it's settled in your heart. Listen to me, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, my loved ones. Unless... You know in your heart, nothing is stronger than the Word of God. You will fail. The devil will bring up something that you think it's, there's no way we can conquer this. This mountain is too high for us to get over it. See, unless, unless you, there's a change of mind. Remember the Bible says, be renewed in your mind. Be renewed in your mind according to Scripture. Be renewed in your mind. And this is that superiority that we need to connect with. We need to connect Scripture to a higher, higher degree. We need to make... And, and if, you, if you can't do that, and, and it starts small. We, you, you won't go into spiritual warfare unless you know your weapons. You won't go into spiritual warfare unless you know how to pray. You won't know into spiritual warfare unless you know how the kingdom of God operates. And you won't go into spiritual warfare until you acknowledge that the devil is your enemy. We need to understand that this, these are spiritual rules. These are things that we should know about. And the only way that we know going to know, there's, there's no other mediums, uh, dear brothers. There's nothing else. My sisters, my, 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 my friends, there's nothing else in this world that connects us to the spiritual world than the Bible. We will learn everything out of the Word. We don't have anything else. The world cannot offer anything. There's nothing in the world that will offer us a spiritual weapon to conquer the world. There's, there's just it, it, You have to settle this in your mind. There's nothing, doesn't matter who, the cleverest people on earth will not offer spiritual help. But the Bible does. The Bible is all in all. The Bible says God, all in all. Jesus, all in all. Holy Spirit, all in all. So the, we need to come to a point. And as I said just now, it starts small. Is God my final authority in my workplace 
Now, if you say yes, then you need to have all the rules and the regulation that God has instituted for your workplace. All of us know this. When you when you get employed by some somebody, for example, when I was employed by ISCO, ASCO and Arcelor Metal, when I was employed by them, I had to I had to know the rules. I had to know the safety. I had to know the first aid policies. I had to know the works policies. This is how they work. This is what that was a kingdom regulation that they have. Why are we different with the Bible? The Bible is our kingdom. I, I can, what word can I use? Constitution is one of the better words. The Bible is God's kingdom constitution. We all know what the constitution is. South Africa has got a constitution. But did you know that all the constitution in the world, from every nation, from every world powers, was put down on paper? Everything. Because constitution, if it's been spoken about, can be forgotten. I can't remember what the constitution was there, but praise God, I can just take up the constitution of my church. Even my church has got constitutions. And that's there for a purpose. No, you can't, you can't tell me somebody who's been in a church and I've read, I've read the, 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 the book of the constitution 40 years ago, I would remember every law inside it. There's no way about it. Unless you've got an idyllic uh, memory that you can read and, and remember. That's why it's put into words. That's why every contract is being made into words. And when they tell you sign here, sign here, sign there, that means they are telling you you've read it and you agree with what was written there. So your, your signature indicates that you agree. Now, why do we think the kingdom of God is different? God, God, God uh, the, the kingdom of God has been written for us. It's called the Bible. And the, when, you, when you get born again, you sign a contract with God, signed by His blood. In other words, you are a child of God, you just you just sign a contract. This is my this is a contract of God. I've been born again. That means I've got to study now the constitution of the, of the kingdom and abide by that constitution. I'm, I'm not called, guys. I'm not called to change anything. Praise God. God never said, "Okay, Jerry, uh, when you read the Bible, you can change whatever you want." No. He's the king. He made it, and he says, "You want to be in the kingdom." Follow the constitution. Now, we, we, we understand this now. We understand because we abide by the constitution. Okay? <laughs> there, there's a law on the road that says there's speed regulation. 120. <laughs> Sometimes... And I'm sure some of the bikers will understand. <laughs> Sometimes we are outside the constitution of the land. And I'm not talking about going down downhill. I'm <laughs> and all the bikers know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes we... Our speed does not correspond to the constitution of the land. And you you know you run a risk by breaking the constitution. We know that. But regardless, in the kingdom, 
God says to us, abide by my word and I will live with you. Abide by my word and I and the Father will come and dine with you. Meaning that when I abide by the constitution of heaven, by the way, the constitution of heaven and the constitution of the kingdom of God on the earth are the same. They're not double-minded, they're the same thing. So we better get used to it now. Because when we get to heaven, it will be the same. Same constitution. The kingdom of God runs with one rule, God's rules. And we are not called to change any of these rules. We are not called to deviate from any of these rules. We are called to be in position to follow the rules and get what the rules bring upon us. If I follow the rules, I'm blessed going in, going out. I'm blessed in my house. I'm blessed in my work. I'm blessed in the church. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. The Bible says that when I follow the kingdom of God, when I've got, when my mind is connected to the kingdom of God, when my spirit is connected to the will, to the will of God, to the to the work of God, to the kingdom of God, when my mind is made up, I'm going to work and extend the kingdom of God according to the purpose of God. Then I become a blessing to bless others. It's simple understanding. It's a simple understanding. We follow the constitution and the promises of God will follow us. When the disciples were sent out, when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit after Jesus was gone up to heaven and they went out with the Holy Spirit and the, the Bible says that God followed them with signs and wonders. Imagine that. Many people go to, to, to church to go and see the wonders but nobody's, nobody's prepared to do what will bring the wonders and the miracles and the healings and everything. We want to see before we believe. Now we know what happened with Thomas. He says, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Are you, are, you, are you the one that requires to see something before you know that you are blessed? Or are you going to depend on the will of God by reading the word of God? No, he says, you know what? I am blessed. I am blessed. I don't care what the world says. The Bible says I am blessed. Therefore, I will declare I am blessed. I've got to declare it. Any constitution has to be declared. And the kingdom of God's constitution declares I am blessed to be a blessing. So, so we, we, we are in a position to say, you know what? I will, I'm going to make. And this is we are carrying on with this next week. I want you to make a quality decision. Maybe, 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 God is not your final authority on everything in your life. Maybe. Maybe He is. Praise God. Praise God. Carry on. But maybe God is not your final authority. And yeah, we have we have a problem, because all of us wants the promises of God upon our lives. All of us, all of, all of us wants our needs to be met. All of all of us want to be a blessing. We want to be blessed, and we want to be a blessing. Is there anyone in the kingdom who doesn't like to do something good about people? Of course not. I believe so. Every Christian should want to bless somebody. Every Christian should have that thing in his heart. You know what? I'm part of the kingdom. Somebody out the other day, I'm, I'm part of one group on the, on the WhatsApp. Uh, it's, a, it's a neighborhood watch. And so somebody just right there, does anybody have the passion? That the, the DVD, the passion of Christ? And without thinking, I responded, yes, I've got it. And the people says, would you be willing to lend it to us for the evening? I says, yes, come and get it. And I gave him my house number and everything. And within uh, half an hour, they were, they were there. And I just lent them the, the, the DVD and they went out and they enjoyed it. I was a blessing to them. But you know what happened? When they brought the DVD back, 
They gave me a worship CD with it. To say just and they tell me now just to, to to thank you for that. Now did you see that? Not only was I blessed to bless them with it with, with that, which is a small thing. That's okay. It's a small thing, but it, it we don't have to always wait for the massive thing to bless people. No, small things. Phone somebody says, you know what I was thinking about you and I'm praying for you. That will bless somebody. That will bless somebody. Just phone. Phone somebody. Say, hey guys, how you doing? I am blessed when my friends phone me up and say, hey Pastor Jerry, what are you doing? But now, not only did I bless those people, but the blessing came back to me and they blessed me. With, and I'm, I'm, I was listening to it this after, in my car. Man, what a blessing it is. And uh, I, I will let them know what a blessing that CD is to me. It's wow! It's it, you worship with that CD, you sing with that CD. It's it's an amazing. You drive so nicely with that CD, guys. Be a blessing. Be a blessing to somebody. And this is a time. This lockdown is your time to tell you know what. I'm going to bless somebody. I'm going to phone this person and say, you know what? I'm thinking about you. And is there anything I can do? Do you need anything? Is there anything, uh, uh, something I can help you with? Be a blessing. Because God says, I'm blessing you so that you can be a blessing. I am blessing you. God says, I am blessing you so that you can be a blessing. So, and I mean, all of us want to be blessed. And all of us want to bless somebody. Thank you for joining me. God bless you. God keep you. Stay safe. And bless somebody. In Jesus' name. Shalom.